Okay, now here um, I have nickel and hydroxide. Nickel is a transition metal, so I need to specify its charge. And we know from hydroxide, we've, we know that is a negative one charge because we've memorized it. And we have two of those, so nickel must have a positive two charge. So this is nickel two hydroxide. Okay, this is one of the few polyatomic ions that ends in IDE. Okay. Now uh, here we have xenon and chlorine. Okay, xenon um, is a non-metal. It's a noble gas. Uh, this is one of the rare compounds that xenon will form. Um, and uh, so here we have two nonmetals. So that makes this a molecule. And therefore, we um, name it using the, the rules for molecules where we use the Greek prefixes. So we have one there. Um, so we're not going to put the mono since that's the first element, but we have dichloride. So xenon dichloride. Okay. Here we have carbon and bromine, two nonmetals again. So this is a molecule, and that will be carbon tetrabromide. Right. Here we have cadmium, and this um, I could I could kind of make a division here. The remaining ones we have uh, will involve some, uh, for the most part, less common um, ions. Okay, um, but there's still some of these are still very important to know. They're just somewhat less common than. Uh, the hydroxide or the sulfate that we might see. Okay, so here we have cadmium, and this is sulfite. SO4 is sulfate. SO3, one less, is sulfite. Um, cadmium, however, is a transition metal. Um, but this is, uh, I threw a few of them here. There's a few exceptions cadmium, silver, and zinc. And if we look at the periodic table, um, uh, these are some of the, uh, the exceptions to the rule. Um, zinc and cadmium have a positive two charge. Silver has a positive one. Okay, So instead of being like the others where it can be uh, different um, uh, charges, Zinc and cadmium are always plus two. Silver is always plus one. And so we don't need to uh, specify the charge in the name. Okay. Uh, the same thing applies to this first row over here, scandium and yttrium. Uh, those are always going to be plus three. And so we don't need to specify that in the name. However, those are the only exceptions um, that we will be dealing with there. Um, and so um, just remember that, you know, it's like you have the plus three, it kind of repeats the cycle you have on uh, on this end over here. I can't quite get it in the view. There we go. Um, we have plus one, plus two, and then plus three. Okay, and then these ones are all variable. And then here we have plus three, and so it kind of goes backwards the same way, plus two and plus one. You can see that trend there. Um, but the rest of those are um, variable uh, in their charges or possible charges. Um, okay, so we have cadmium and sulfite, right? And since cadmium is always a plus two, we don't need to um, 
specify the charge in Roman numerals. Okay, and that's for all three of these silver. This is just silver bromide. Okay, so you know, a lot of times we might have just one letter different. There's only one letter different between sulfite and sulfide, um, the D to a T. There's only one letter difference uh, between sulfite and where's my sulfate, okay? The A to an I or the T to a D. So you have to be fairly careful with some of uh, those um, words. Okay, here we have zinc and NO2. NO2 is nitrite. So this is uh, zinc nitrite. Again, even though these are transition metals, um, because they're the exceptions to the rule, um, these ones we don't have to show the Roman numerals. In fact, we shouldn't show the Roman numerals. Zinc is always positive 2, so the nitrite, it requires two of them at a negative 1 each to balance that charge. 